Welcome everybody to day four of Dial a Discipline and Dealing with Power Struggles. My daughter Michelle is here today helping. Wave, say hello Michelle. Hello everybody. <laughs> I, I didn't go to cheer camp today. I went to help mom, so. Oh, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is her first summer in 14 years that she is not traveling all over the country and world teaching cheer camps because of COVID. So she's doing it virtually, which is amazing. So yes, we have been talking about the Dial of Discipline. Ta-da! My beautiful tool that I made to help all of us know what to do when our kids are misbehaving. Monday, we talked about identifying the four goals and using the outside row of this to figure that out. And then we started talking about one of the four goals, which is power struggles. And Tuesday, we talked about why kids love to power struggle. Yesterday, we talked about how our parenting style of kind and firm is so necessary when we're dealing with power struggles. And today, we're going to talk about how to get out of a power struggle when we get in the middle of one. Okay, so we're going to start with the first idea of ways to get out of a power struggle. So this is an example of a child who I've been telling to take out the trash and he hasn't been taking out the trash. So the first way is the ineffective way. This is the way not to do it. And then once that this clip is over, we'll come back and we'll discuss this for a minute and then we'll go back and we'll see how to do the first idea to get out of a power struggle. Okay, so this is my 12-year-old son, Alan. One of his chores is to take out the trash every night by nine o'clock. And it is now 9.30, and the trash has not been taken out yet. And he's watching his favorite program on TV. Now, I'm gonna do this twice. The first way I'm gonna do the ineffective way, the way that doesn't work very well, to make a few points, and then I'll redo it with our first idea for getting out of a power struggle. Okay, so you're watching your favorite program. It's it's 9.30, 9.20, 9.30. You're supposed to have it out by 9, and it's not out yet. Alan, why don't you have that trash out yet? Uh, it's supposed to be out at 9 o'clock, and it's 9.20 right now. I want you to get that out right now. Do you hear me? Get that out. Get that trash out right now. Do you hear me? Get that. Give me that. Give me that. Get that trash out. Get that trash out right now. Are you going to take it out? No. Ah! <laughs> why do I become crazy mom? What is the feeling motivating me? To you want to be heard. I want to be heard. What else? You want to be obeyed. I want. He needs to obey me because why? In order for you to feel. Why? Like what? What if he doesn't respect me? Then you feel out of control. Then I'm out of control. So I believe at the root of all crazy parent activity is fear, mm -hmm. and it's fear of losing my parental authority. If he doesn't do this right now, he's gonna go out and shoot up a school or something and I'm gonna be to blame for it. I've gotta get him to do what he's supposed to do. <laughs> oh, no. Right? I mean, there's a, there's a certain fear of getting, you know, making sure we're doing this right because it's gonna be our fault if they, or if they don't become proper adults. How much authority did I have with him there? None. Zip. I lost control. Zip. Because I lost control, I lost respect right. and he didn't do what I was asking him to do. So the very thing that I fear I'm causing with my behavior. And now that you've seen this, when you're home and you get into one of these situations and you're starting to lose it, there's a little voice and it might be mine. <laughs> and you're gonna be at a choice point. And sometimes you'll be able to back off and regroup and try to figure out a different approach. And other times you're gonna go for it, but you're always gonna be a choice now. Do it, because some kids will get up and do it. And what is motivating the ones who do it in that situation? What is their motivation to do it? Fear. Fear. Crazy mom. I am afraid of crazy mom. If I don't do this now, I don't know what she's gonna do to me. So there's a lot of fear going on there. It's so funny, I was watching that and I totally remember a time with Michelle. This, you know, this is so frustrating when, I don't know if you remember this, Michelle, but we got into a power struggle. I was picking you up from junior high and we had a, this huge fight and we, I came home I went in my room and put my head under my covers because I had yelled at her and I know like, oh, I'm not supposed to yell and da, 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 da. And it was like one of those, ah. And so I'm laying there with my head under the covers and I don't hear anything out there. And all of a sudden I hear this noise under my door and I look and this paper comes under the door 
and she had written me you had written me a note and it said i'm sorry mom and like a pictures and i was like oh my gosh she's the adult now but but i i attribute that to the years i had spent you know i had probably had parenting classes for five or six years at that point been teaching and you know of of doing my best and doing the right thing most of the time and so at that point she was actually able to be the one that apologized for you know contributing to the fight as opposed to me role modeling which i had done up to that point well she beat me to it so it's like that's the result of having this is none of us are ever going to be perfect especially me however we're not damaging our kids we're actually getting we're making forward progress and so yeah that was really fun michelle i was so impressed with that um that you were you were able to come to your senses sooner than i was so good on you oh interesting that does not sound like me but <laughs> that's why i'm the favorite <laughs> what i saw looking at that is everything that had led up to that point like you were in a losing position from the beginning this happens not just in our relationship with our kids but with our you know our partners i mean if we're sitting on a lot of frustration and it felt unlistened to you know it's like hey honey what's going on i don't know why we bother i don't know what's going on. it's like whoa like you know exactly to me, what i saw was all of the unaddressed frustration and stuff that came before that um, and I think addressing that also then helps you be better poised and balanced in that moment. And I think that, again, that speaks back to taking care of ourselves. You know, one of the very first topics you learn in here is take care of yourself, keep your batteries recharged, get enough sleep, drink water, eat when you need to, go to the bathroom when you need to, all of the things that you have to do to take care of yourself right now. Better alternative is something that we call use loving guidance. Same situation. He's supposed to have that trash out by 9 o'clock and it's 9.20 and it's not out yet. Hang on. Oh, I forgot to take out the trash. I'm sorry. <gasps> so why did you do it? Well, I just saw the smile on your face and I knew I did something wrong. What motivated him to do it? Love. You. Okay, love was number one. He was being motivated through love rather than fear. And he and when I approached, he started feeling this feeling that caused him to do it. What was that? Guilt. Guilt! <laughs> the way I handled it this time allowed him to feel bad for not doing what he was supposed to do, which is how integrity works. So how I responded as a parent there created that. So let's look at what the steps are. First, you're gonna enter the situation calmly. The first time I came in screaming and raging and I was bringing war into a war. So you're gonna enter the situation calmly and with Zen. I did not say anything, anything, any words. <laughs> words are the fuel of power struggles. Any words I would say there, he would use as fuel to fight against me. The next thing I did was I got down on his level. Get on their level, whatever that means. If you have to get down to their level, sit on the couch with them, you know, scooch down, be eye to eye. So got on his level, I looked in his eyes, and then what did I do? Giving you a hint. <laughs> I rubbed his back, okay? So I made a non-verbal loving touch. And you'd be amazed at how quickly your children can melt when you just do those things. Now the use loving garnets part is next of what I did. So I'm sitting there rubbing his back, smiling, and then I make a non-verbal signal for what I wanted. So I was looking down the hall where the trash was and I was looking at my watch. So non-verbal signals, because your kid's gonna go, what? What do you want, right? It's a trick, it is a trap. They are trying to get you engaged in a verbal battle so they can power struggle with you and not have to do what you're asking. Michelle, any comments you wanna make? I just started laughing when I saw this clip because this is like the thing I remember most from growing up and like <laughs> just that really gets you. You're like, sit, you're sitting there and you're like, stop, I know what you're doing here. <laughs> And then like, there's no way you're, you get out of it. I nanny now, so I use this on my nanny kids and it works like a charm. <laughs> so I hope that you guys, if you haven't tried this, that you try it. It'll awesome. get Thank you for commenting on your own experience. Oh my gosh, that's like the, the one that gets me. <laughs> I don't know. I remember telling you 
you're doing that positive parenting stuff on me. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. <laughs>